Hey everybody, uh, Jay here with RC and Nature, and uh, today I want to uh, take my Max out in the snow. Uh, I haven't run this, I've run this one time um, with 3S, uh, because I just got a 4S battery, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a bit, but uh, I haven't really run it. I ran it with 3S, but I didn't bother recording that because it, uh, well, yeah, it was 3S, and the Max designed to run on 4S. It was a little sluggish. Uh, it still worked relatively well, but uh, yeah, I wanted to do the video on 4S. Um, so I got this beast. Here you can see I've gorilla taped my body. And uh, the guy I bought this off of in Edmonton, St. Albert actually, uh, his buddy does specialty paint jobs. And he had uh, done this one. And it's pretty cool. Kind of like a, a subtle black to blue flame with the Max in it. Cool body. So uh, I figured I'd try to uh, preserve and save this one. But uh, yeah, all the main things that you want. My out drives, metal. The brace there. The underguard. And he had switched them to 17 mil hub. So, you know, all the stuff. Oh, and the servo steering mechanism is also aluminum. So, uh, you know, everything that I would have gone and done right off the bat, he's uh, he had already done. So I got this truck in, in really good shape, uh, ready to run. Uh, and upgraded to the point where I would have upgraded it pretty much uh, other than you know maybe the ESC in the future but uh, I do have two of these ESCs I picked one up in Drumheller for like 120 bucks from this place that was going totally out of RC and so I've got two 4S Traxxas ESCs and I'm actually planning on putting one in my LMT. And that brings us to the next dilemma here. Um, I bought a battery, 4S, the Z battery, that will fit the LMT. Uh, also thinking that it would fit in my Max. Um, it does fit in the Max. But you gotta squeeze the shit out of it to get it pinned down. Uh, once again, Traxxas and the battery containers, you know. Uh, I guess it's like that with every company. It's just, you know, I wanted a 4S battery that I could run in my LMT and my Max. And uh, that's not exactly the case. So, what my plan is. I've got it marked there with the red crayon. This battery, let me get this out of the way here so it's not flopping, comes to this mark here and this mark here. Now what I can do is I can take my Dremel and I can remove all this in here just by, you know, maybe two or three mils. And I mean, that's a pretty thick clamp. So I can go down two or three mils on that. This battery, will, it'll clamp down on this battery and it'll have a little groove in there so it'll fit and sit flush. But if I want to put a bigger battery, I've still got all this area that'll hold it down. And I mean, I don't care. I'll, I'll put some foam in there or whatever, make it work. So my conclusion is that the best way to deal with this is to remove that inner part with my Dremel. It's going to be a messy hassle but it should only take me about 20 minutes. And, uh, and then I'll be able to clamp this battery down securely and uh, it'll be good to go. 
So uh, I will show you what it looks like and how it fits. Uh, I am charging that battery now. So I'm not going to give you an example of how it fits right now. But when I put it in, I got to really lean on it with all my weight, clamp it down, and it's really bowed, eh? And, I mean, after running in the snow, that's going to be fun to get out. So I'm thinking I'm going to do this, and uh, I'll show you what the finished product looks like uh, when I'm done. I'm not going to bother going through the whole Dremel process. Uh, if you have a Dremel, you can kind of imagine how it would go. You take your discs, you cut your straight lines, and then you just rip out the center with, like, one of the rolling papers or uh, circle disc type sand blocks or whatever you know I'll, I'll, I'll give an example of the ones that I've used to do it and uh, if you feel that you come into the same situation and you want to do the same then you know what uh, what Dremel bits to use but uh, yeah I'll get back to you when I get there hey guys here we are uh, back at you with the uh, max battery clip and the uh, transition for the uh, clip to make it fit in this battery here. This is the 520 50C Z battery 4S that I bought for the Max and primarily for the LMT uh, like I said before I want a battery that fits both of them so here's what I did you can see I ground off quite a bit in there and you really go right to this mark and this mark here you can see basically the size of that battery is marked on the side of the clip now I'm putting it in sideways like this not upright with this up I'm putting it sideways like so because it's a few millimeters less that way but you can see this is a new clip too because I don't think this truck was very old when I got it but that clips on a lot better than what it did before And I mean, she's still bowed out a little bit, but you can see there's a lot better clearance there. And I don't want to go taking too much off because I want it to hold in there good. So as long as I can undo it, get it in and out, like because this would barely even close over top of it before. And now... I can get that in pretty reasonably and it fits in there nice and tight everything's good and snug and that should work fine as it loosens up this will bend a little bit and I'm okay with that I mean I could go back and take a bit more off but after what I just went through with the cleanup you know I've been considering getting one of them Milwaukee uh, cordless vacuum cleaners but I keep thinking well I can get new twin servos for my e Revo or whatever you know so I keep overlooking the uh, cordless vacuum until I have to pull out the Dyson and plug it in and then you know vacuum everything up that way and it's a pain in the ass and I uh, I got everything cleaned up now and this fits uh, to my liking I mean it's a little bit on the tight side but that's probably better than uh, having it too loose having to use foam you know or jeopardizing the feed, fitting of any uh, larger batteries in the future so I just wanted to take off just enough 
of what I need and no more. Um, guys, if you don't have a Dremel and you're into RC, I highly recommend getting one. Um, those are the bits I used. I used the cutting disc just to score out the side, just mark my spot. And then primarily, that's uh, this one here. For uh, It's just a sandpaper that slips over top of a, a piece you undo that screw. And I only had to use the one. And then I just smoothed it out a little bit with this little green one. And uh, worked fantastic. It literally took me about 20 minutes to do that. Uh, I bought this Dremel on Amazon with no bits, I think for 60 bucks with a charger. And then you don't have to hassle around with the cord all the time, right? You can flip it, you know, try to get in there, move it around. It makes it so much better to not have a cord. And I mean, it, it ain't that much more expensive than the corded one, uh, except you gotta go buy your bits separately. And I think that was like 30 bucks for that bit set. And uh, then you're set to go, right? Or you could probably buy the cordless version uh, with the bits and everything for around $100, you know. But uh, that's the route I took and it's been working really fine. Uh, I charged that up and I haven't come across a job that I couldn't do in one charge. And I've done some, some fairly extensive uh, Dremel jobs too. And uh, it's always held up, so it's been really good. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, Max battery clip upgrade that I did with my Dremel. And uh, I think that'll work pretty good.